A few years ago, bodybuilding was regarded as one of those shadowy backstreet pastimes practiced by only a few of the truly committed. It's also, as we've just seen in Marion Prison, something to occupy the time and energy of the nation's jail population. In fact, the term pumping iron originated in the prisons. Well, pumping iron has come out of the back streets and the prison gyms. You can blame this new respectability, or at least popularity, on a book and a movie, both of which featured a young Austrian bodybuilder named Arnold Schwarzenegger, who has taken a boyish grin, a massive set of muscles like the fella behind me here, and an unpronounceable name, and turned them into fame and fortune. Arnold may still look as if he's pumping iron. In truth, he's pumping gold. The bodybuilder of bodybuilders, Arnold Schwarzenegger, six foot two and 220 pounds of solid Austro-Hungarian muscle. A press agent's dream as he promotes bodybuilding in the most unexpected places and in the most unexpected company. Traveling always in glory, from the glitter of the Cannes Film Festival to the glamour of the White House. To exhibitions in art museums, to the canvas of artist Jamie Wyeth, to the company of artist Andy Warhol, and Candace Bergen, and Carolyn Kennedy, and even the benediction by the closest thing we have to a dowager queen in this country, Jacqueline Onassis. Up. Arnold Schwarzenegger arrived full-blown a year ago as the centerpiece of a feature documentary movie called Pumping Iron. And if you listen to Arnold and others with a stake in the bodybuilding business, you would believe that half the nation is made up of bodybuilders and the other half bodybuilding fans. That movie was co-produced and directed by George Butler, who was also the co-author of the book, and who probably knows as much about bodybuilding as anyone. In the end, isn't the whole thing proof that you can hype anything? In order to make a movie about bodybuilding, you've got to have hype, because no one in their right mind would go to the movie otherwise. No one thought that an interesting movie could be made about a subject as bizarre as bodybuilding, because they've heard for so long that it's a desolate kind of sport with all of the myths that uh, everyone has probably The myths being what? The myths are that bodybuilders are dumb, uncoordinated, probably gay, they grow fat when they grow old, and uh, they can't tie their shoelaces. None of it's true. We looked into these myths, and what Butler says is mostly true. They do not lose their coordination and flexibility if they do other forms of exercise besides bodybuilding. Their muscles do not turn to fat because a muscle fiber is a muscle fiber and cannot convert to fat. But a bodybuilder can get fat if he stops working out but continues to eat like a horse. And we found nothing to support the notion that most bodybuilders are homosexual. Arnold Schwarzenegger has done more to dispel the myths than anyone else in the world of bodybuilding. It's the fastest growing sport in America, they'll tell you. And if you did not remember that every sport claims to be the fastest growing sport, then you might believe it. Of course, there's some question of whether it's a sport at all. You really can't compare it to anything. You can't compare it to any other form of sport or any other form of art. It's sort of out like bullfighting. It's all out on its own. <laughs> Smith, the dean of American sports writers, says it lies somewhere between the roller derby and the ice show. But the hype goes on, and it works because to a lot of people, Arnold just looks so good. I've covered every city in America. I feel that you can have the best product in the world, but if you don't know how to sell it, and if you don't, know, if you don't have anybody who can sell it for you or tell the public, it's a waste of time, the whole thing. It's not unlike the Farrah Fawcett Majors phenomenon. Mix a little talent for doing something and a lot of good looks and plaster the concoction everywhere and you have a phenomenon, a vital commodity 
For without such phenomena, magazines like People would become tongue-tied. Am I married? No, I'm not married. <laughs> Why? <laughs> The question is if he would do it. Arnold travels the country displaying himself, which is, after all, the main work of a bodybuilder. He lets almost everything hang out, as they say, leaving a trail of fantasies for young women and some men. After all, mystery is what a star is all about. And wherever he goes, he sells bodybuilding and thus the paraphernalia of bodybuilders. Not everyone, however, finds a bodybuilder the body beautiful. Oh, yeah, I'm pumped up already. <laughs> if you go to the Metropolitan Museum or if you go to any of the great museums of Europe, you will find pieces of sculpture that thousands and thousands of people have gone to see for three or four hundred years, which they admire as an item of considerable beauty. Um, but when that piece of sculpture turns into the flesh, people are somehow frightened by it. And uh, I think that's got to do with the fact that bodybuilding as an art form at this time is so profoundly original and so far ahead of its time. People just aren't ready for it yet. But the final performance, the three-minute posing routine that one does on a stage is then much more than like a, a dance or like ballet. Tchaikovsky is important to bodybuilding, but not nearly so important as the mirror. It's the only way a man can tell how his pectorals are doing. But I don't know any bodybuilders who then, after they're through with the training, go home and look in the mirror and say, wow, handsome devil. You know, this doesn't exist. I mean, you're never looking at yourself. A bodybuilder looks at his body as a thing, you know, and he wants to develop this thing, and that's what he's looking at, but never at himself. Arnold's mirror tells him that he is not only the fairest of them all, but just about the only man in bodybuilding who has made any money out of it. For example, the last Mr. Olympia, considered among aficionados the world's champion of bodybuilding, received a measly $2,500 prize for a lifetime of grunting, jerking, and posing. And it gives me much pleasure to present to you from Gold's Gym, the Hall of Champions, the 1977 Mr. California Day. Bodybuilding, for the most part, is an entertainment or pastime designed almost entirely for the financial well-being of its promoters. The real money goes to men like Ben Weider, who runs something called the International Federation of Bodybuilders, which organizes most of the contests all around the world. Because our motto is, bodybuilding is good for nation building. He's also president of Weider Sports Equipment a company that markets all the hundreds of products that bodybuilders use, the weights and machines and pulleys that look like relics of the Spanish Inquisition, and creams and pills and diet supplements, all the equipment for the right balance of food and torture that promises to transform you from a 97-pound weakling into an Arnold Schwarzenegger. As a result, Ben Weider is a very rich man who works in a sweet-smelling Napoleonic office but whose fortune lies in a hundred dank and foul dressing rooms. What's it worth? Annually. S several million dollars. If you ask Ben Weider, who is the greatest promoter of bodybuilding, he will unhesitatingly tell you it is Ben Weider. If you journey out to California and go to Gold's Gym, the legendary sanctum, the Cooperstown of bodybuilding, the training ground for all the California muscle beach men, and if you ask the owner of Gold's Gym, Ken Sprague, who is the greatest promoter of bodybuilding, he will tell you... I'm the greatest promoter of bodybuilding. Ken Sprague may not be the greatest, but he can take a lot of credit. He's behind this year's Mr. America contest, which is amateur and therefore offers no prize money. Still, he can muster troops of elephants and muscle men to parade through Santa Monica. And he doesn't do it because he likes elephants. 
there you have $100,000 in gross income, $45,000 from the auditorium for ticket sales. You have $145,000. Now, those are the bare minimums. When you're talking about with all the people, the 150,000 people who will be out here on the parade route, it doesn't take into consideration the T-shirts you'll sell, the memorabilia, um, you name it, we'll, we'll hawk it. Ben Weeder, Ken Sprague, both the greatest if that's possible. But if you ask bodybuilders who's the greatest in terms of money, they'll tell you. Obviously, Joe Weider. Joe Weider would have to be. Joe Cafuido. I would say Joe Weider. Joe Weider. I think I have. We introduce yet another Weider, Ben Weider's brother, Joe. Joe Weider is publisher of Muscle Builder and Power. It's no accident that virtually every ad in the magazine is for a product marketed by Joe and his brother, Ben. And a lot of the articles extol the virtues of the Weeder method of bodybuilding. It all adds up to big money. I, I don't know the exact figures. I would say we'll, we do about 20 million or so. 20 million dollars yeah. a year and we do about 20 to 30 million. Strange characters abound in the wonderful world of bodybuilding. It would seem that there are as many promoters of it as there are participants. Well, I agree with you, there are a lot of strange characters around in this business, but to promote something like that, that is that uh, young, it takes a lot of different people to promote it in the proper way. And each of the characters that you just mentioned have a right to say that they contributed to the promotion of bodybuilding. Arnold won't say how much money he makes, he doesn't want to cause any ill feeling. But he has become a small conglomerate unto himself. Through bodybuilding, I did a lot of things, you know. I mean, I, I got into the films. I did uh, three films so far and one television uh, film. I have a very successful mail-order business, and I'm promoting bodybuilding competitions, and I'm now working on my second book. And on and on and on. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a contented soul. His is one of those stories that is not supposed to have a happy ending. The big strapping kid pulled out of the Austrian hinterland is supposed to throw it all away to the promoters and a couple of floozies and end up a hopeless case on Skid Row. That's how fiction would have it. But not so Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's happy as a clam, strong as a horse. And if you find bodybuilding a funny thing for a grown-up, intelligent man to be doing, well, so does Arnold. And he's laughing with you all the way to the bank. At Western...